Okay, welcome back to Trade Out of Time. I hope that we are all doing well. This week we are walking along the Regent's Canal. This is one of London's finest green and watery arteries. It connects west to east and runs from Maida Vale all the way down to through to Hackney. Uh, if you were to, it joins up with the Grand Union Canal, and it, if you were to head north, it would take you all the way up through Uxbridge and on to Birmingham. And we're going to walk the section between Regent's Park and King's Cross today. So the walk begins in Baker Street, walk through Regent's Park, take in all the beautiful scenery here, and then join on to the canal. The canals were super significant during the Industrial Revolution. So prior to this, coal from from the north would be transported down to London and this would happen in a sort of dangerous way tra transported along the coast in ships however the canals meant that this journey was cut time money and lives were saved with the canals being built it also it's important that these canals were built with migrant laborers many people from places such as Ireland came over and worked on the canals as navvies so Britain's Industrial Revolution would not have happened without migration anyway let's get on with the walk one of the first places you pass on this walk is through London Zoo London Zoo was built in 1828 and has a really really interesting history so this is actually where Winnie the Pooh lived but first before Winnie the Pooh ended up here a soldier from Winnipeg to be precise ended up serving for Canada during the First World War and he brought along with him this bear which was nicknamed Winnie and this bear ended up entertaining troops on the front line and a bear that ended up really we can be saying as a serving member during the First World War. Anyway, the soldier thought that the front line in France was no place for a bear to be living, so sent it to London uh, where it was homed in London Zoo. This is where, after the war, A.A. Milne ended up taking his son, Christopher Robin, to see this bear, and hence the inspiration for Winnie the Pooh was po began, and we can say that Winnie the Pooh both served during World War I and had a home in London Zoo. So let's get on with our journey. Once you've finished and walked through this bit of London Zoo, you can head on down to Camden. Here you come up by Camden Lock. You can pick up whatever food you want from Camden Market. I went to Bubba G's where you can get a chicken burger with an onion bhaji on top. It was absolutely delicious. Once we refueled, we then decided to walk on a bit further towards King's Cross. As you're walking along here, you can't help but feel that you're walking in the steps of history. But there are also plenty of things from the present here along with the history. My favourite bit of graffiti along this walk is the nice little painting of Mike Wazowski. It always makes me smile. It, I just, yeah, just one of those things that makes you happy. Anyway, as you approach King's Cross, you will see that there are a skeletons of these old gas towers, these old gas works that used to dominate this industrial area. Remember, King's Cross was where the trains came in where the canals came in and unloaded all of their cargo it was a pretty much an industrial wasteland for much of its history until very barely recently and these gas towers are listed buildings and um, when King's Cross was regenerated they were taken down piece by piece and sent up to Yorkshire so they could be restored by a specialist firm before being sent back down to London put up in a slightly different location and created into these luxury flats I think flats in here now start at about £750,000 so so much for G regeneration for local people but hey ho but next you are on to Cold Drops Yard and I think this really has come into its own during lockdown I was a bit dubious of Cold Drops Yard when I first saw it I thought this is just full of luxury shops however it is full of amazing things to do and there's lots of space for you to sit down and have a picnic buy some drinks from the local shops and do things on a bit of a cheaper budget if you don't fancy going to the restaurants. Anyway, this is Coal Drops Yard, and as the name suggests, it's where coal was dropped off. So the railways coming into London weren't allowed to go into the city, so this is where they unloaded their cargo and the coal was dropped off. Each of these archways would have provided air vents so the coal and all the dust could escape to stop people from suffocating, and it would be stored here before being handed out to the various factories within Victorian London. So this really was the fueling room of the industrial revolution so once you're here have a look around taking some of the sites taking some of the food you could go to sons and daughters to pick up a great sandwich 
uh, I decided to go to Redemption Roasters just to grab a coffee. This is a really nice social enterprise which roasts coffees from within prisons, giving prisoners wages and giving them skills and helping them for when they come out of prison. Also you can take in the scenes of Granary Square as the name suggests, this is where there was a granary and storing grain, now it is home to Central St Martins. So I hope you have enjoyed this video, once you've walked along you can easily carry on to Islington or under Hackney along the canal if you wish or you can be lazy and hop on the train like I did. Again King's Cross is on the Metropolitan Line so this walk all stays nice and configured. So I hope you've enjoyed this video, please make sure you share it if you have with anyone you think might find it interesting, but until next time, stay free and be kind, I'll see you in the next video, see ya.